Hey up guys, welcome to this lesson. This lesson today is all about the major pentatonic. I'm going to do an autopsy of the major pentatonic and show you how the caged octaves fit around the major pentatonic scale and I'm also going to relate them to what I call the chord of the moment. Now don't worry if you don't know any of these terms, they'll be in the end screen at the end of this video so make sure you watch all the way to the end. There are PDFs going to be included in the description but let me walk you through this major pentatonic right now and this will add something beautiful to your playing. Okay guys, let's get into the nitty gritty of this major pentatonic auto. What we're going to look at is the scale formula, the chords that it goes over. Then what we're going to do is we're going to build the major pentatonic scale shape using the caged octaves. This is a really useful way of understanding it because the caged octaves will have the same emotional property over the chord of the moment. If you don't know what the chord of the moment is, I will put a link to that video in the end card of this video. The first thing we need to notice is the major pentatonic. It is the pentatonic and the way we want to think about that pentatonic is that it is a five note scale. Penta means five, tonic means tones. It's a very simple scale and as such it doesn't sound too complex. It's about matching the scale with the chord. And The first chord we're going to look at is the A chord. This A chord can be either chord one, chord four or chord five in the key. So that means this scale is applicable in three different keys. Now that's a very, very straight vanilla sounding chord. A major just sounds bright and cheerful and the major pentatonic is going to sound just like the major chord, it's going to sound simple too. The next chord we get is the A major 7. Now I want you to remember this guys, the way that the notes harmonize in a diatonic key, the major 7 chord only happens on chord 1 or chord 4. The next chord is the A7. We can put the major pentatonic on the top of an A7 chord. Now the A7 chord can happen as chord 1, 4 or 5 in a dominant blues, but if we're thinking of it being diatonic then it would happen on chord 5. Those are the chords that we can play this scale over the top of. This is kind of a chord scale relationship that we want to get to know. So now it is time to build the major pentatonic using the caged octaves. Because this is an E shaped scale, because the root note falls on the E string, I'm going to apply the E shaped octaves to the E string. As you can see there, there's the E shaped octave there, and there is the distribution of the root notes. Now remember, the role of the root note is to sound resolved, it's to take you back home. If you are improvising, creating, in a solo, this is where your phrases finish. This is where they want to go to. This is how they want to resolve. The next shape up is the G shaped octave. Now the E shape and the G shape share the E string. And what you can see here on the thick and the thin E string alike is that this root and this second, the second note of the scale, the distribution of those is the same on both E strings because the thin E string mirrors the thick E string. However, if you look at that second there, you can see the G shaped octave pattern as it happens there. Now that second, it's a really nice colour to add to your chords. If you've seen my compound intervals lesson, then you'll know that the second can also be thought of as a ninth. If you haven't seen that video, I will include that in the end card also. Make sure you watch to the end. The next octave we're going to add is the A-shaped octave, because we're moving along the string systematically. We've dispensed with the E string, we're moving on to the A string. Now the A-shape here has a, an important function. This is the third, and this is the note that makes the scale major. It's a major third. Remember, the third defines whether a chord is major or minor. The next octave we're going to add is the C-shaped octave. Now that C-shaped octave, that is on the A string as well. The C and the A shape share the A string as you go along systematically. Now this is the fifth. This is nearly home, but not 
quite. If you want to resolve, going from the fifth to the root sounds superbly resolved because that is almost like something called a cadence. It's worth noting that by now we have already got the root, the third, and the fifth present in here. So we essentially are already able to spell out the major triad underneath. The last note to add is the D-shaped octave. And if we add that note, what that does is that drops that wonderful sounding sixth. Now sixths are a sweet sound. So if you think about it, we have the root, the third and the fifth. That is our triad. And we add that second and that sixth. We have two nice sounding notes. That is the major pentatonic in a nutshell. But what I want to do is I want to add something else to this to just make this just a little bit more special. And this is by adding the flat third. And what essentially this does is this turns this major pentatonic into a major blues scale. What you can see is to turn this major pentatonic into a major blues scale, what we need to do is add that flattened third. Now, because the major pentatonic is so beautifully resolved and lacking in tension, it might feel like you need to put some tension in there. This flat third in this instance doesn't belong, but it makes a wonderful approach note. You can slide from the flat third up to the third or bend up to it. I think it's a really important move to add to your major pentatonic and it can help you to bridge between major pentatonic scales and minor pentatonic scales when you are playing them in a hybrid manner. But that's a subject for another video. Notice in the blue rectangle, I felt it was important to include this little small extension at the top where you can do so much with that little bit there. It's so meanable for making up little phrases and beautiful licks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over onto the guitar, I'm gonna play the chord of the moment, I'm going to play the major pentatonic on top of each chord of the moment and add a little bit of this flat third flavor. And don't worry guys, because I'm going to include this as a PDF in the description below. So this chord, the chord of the moment that you can hear, this is an A major chord. And these are the root notes. Now, if I play through the scale, you can hear that any of those notes are going to sound resolved. That's where the phrase ends. The next note is the G-shaped octave. Now, the thing is, you can hear that that note wants to resolve either up or down. Or resolving up we can even add that little extension we have the major third here this is part of the chord so it actually blends in and there it is in the octave shape so if I wanted to use that idea with the flat third, sliding into it, bending to it, bend and a slide. And here in this little extension that I gave you, The next note is going to be this fifth. And that's the C-shaped octave. And you can hear that that one wants to resolve down to the root. And the last note we get is the sixth. And there it is in the D-shaped octave. That, to me, always seems to want to pull towards the fifth. Mm -hmm. 
Worth noting that the major pentatonic is also this chestnut. If you recognise that, comment below. So the chord of the moment that we have here is the A major 7 chord. I always think that this chord sounds romantic. It's a little jazzy. Now if I play the scale over the top, you'll be able to hear the chord and the scale relationship. Here's just the root note using an E-shaped octave. Now the second on top of this, actually what this does is it turns the chord of the moment from a major seventh, this second now becomes a ninth. And that sounds sweet, so listen to this. The chord of the moment is a major nine. The next note is the third. This disappears a little in the chord. It doesn't really stick out that much like the ninth did here. This second, which is flipping over and becoming a ninth because of it as the compound interval instead. So the next note is that fifth. Now that sounds beautifully bright on top of that major 7 chord. Can you hear how resolved it is when I go from the 5th to the root? From the flat 3rd. And then I resolve the phrase. The last note is this sixth. Because we have the seventh, this sixth sounds like a thirteenth. It is a thirteenth. Now if you listen to that note, if you let it sit on top of the chord and feel what it is saying emotionally, you'll get more of an idea of its usage. That note wants to resolve either up or down. There's the root. Or down. And this chord of the moment that we have now is the A7. This can be chord 1, chord 4 or chord 5 in a dominant blues or chord 5 in the diatonic. So the root note on top, we know that's going to sound resolved. The second, this becomes a ninth. And this is turning the whole chord into an A9 chord. The third, it blends away because it's part of the chord. The fifth, stands nice and proud. The sixth, this is using the D-shaped octave. Now because the seventh is present, the chord of the moment is a thirteenth. This is an A13 now. When I play that note, that turns the whole chord of the moment harmony into a thirteenth chord. And then I release it by changing the notes.
got some value from this lesson, make sure you hit that like. If you do not want to miss out on golden nuggets of guitar information, make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming guitar lessons. This video here on the major scale, it ties in with the minor scale. And do you know what? I'll put that video just here. You might as well watch that and then you'll be even better equipped to play guitar. Go on, click it.